Hi there, my name's Kate Pankhurst from artofstitch.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Kate underscore Art of Stitch. Thanks for joining me again. Um, I'm going to show you today my creative box called Speak Hall. Um, you will be able to see this in the flesh, so to speak, at the Knitting and Stitching show, um, which is at Alexander Palace um, uh, between 7th and 10th of October uh, this year, 2021, um, and it'll be on display at the uh, Royal School of Needlework stand. So there's quite a few of my things there, so you'll be able to see this. This is called Speak Hall. Um, it's based on a manor house um, where I grew up, actually, in Speak in Liverpool. Um, there's also, you'll be able to see my Hand and Lock finalist entry. It's a finalist in two categories, by the way. Not one, but two! Um, and it's called Lockdown O'Clock. Um, I'm not allowed to show you all of that. Um, I might give you a sneak peek, though. Anyway, but let's go back to Speak Hall Creative Box. Absolutely loved making boxes. Um, um, the, the, the little, um, you start with doing a very small box, a little one, um, and I remember the trouble I had with it. Um, my background is as a graphic designer, and um, so my whole life, everything I did was two-dimensional. So suddenly getting into three dimensions was uh, quite the uh, kind of leap of the imagination and the brain for a, for a start. Once I kind of got it though, um, absolutely fell in love with it. So Speak Hall's not my first box. <laughs> it's more like my fifth box. Um, so once I'd figured out um, and been taught, thank you very much, Deb Wilding. Um, so I've been taught uh, how it all works, basically, how to do drawers, um, lift off lids, all of that sort of thing. Um, but let me just start this, um, this kind of little video um, that I uh, have made. So, Creative Book Speak Hall by Kate Penkhurst. Uh, background designer, so I'm, I uh, laid it all out in Photoshop and Illustrator to start with. Um, Speak Hall, it's the real place is a kind of open square. It has a courtyard. Um, this is my workings out for the drawers. This is the roof. So oh, kind of a lot of mitering of the card going on so that you would get these nice um, steepled roofs. This is it being opened up. Um, there are sort of stitch hinges on this. The embroidery um, represents the courtyard. Um, there are yew trees in the real courtyard of the house. Um, so this is the embroidery. Um, it also has some stump work. And work. Uh, th this is fitting together the two panels because it goes across more than one uh, wall, if you like. And you can see everything coming together. So this is it fully open. I designed and had printed, this is my design, based on the real speak hall, some fabric. And that was printed by, designed by me, printed by Woven Monkey, which is a, a really cool British company that prints on. This is cotton fabric uh, with no stretch. Um, this other fabric I got with bricks and uh, roof tiles. And here's the first compartment. It's a lift off lid. Um, with an interesting roof, as you see, so that fits in nicely there. This is, um, this is it being made. This is the inside of that uh, compartment you just saw. Um, uh, the interiors are covered in silk because silk if it's certainly if it's a drawer, it moves uh, nicely, it will slide open. This is a hopper. It's held uh, so it doesn't completely come out. There's a chain in there. Um, this is a lift out compartment or tray, if you like. There are supports on the inside of that box um, so that it, um, it just occupies the top half. And we have little ribbon pools to um, get it out. Uh, yeah door showing a bit of fabric ah oh, this is great this is the secret compartment holding a rosary so that in the real speak hall had priest holes for hiding uh, illegal catholic priests so this represents that this is a little handmade rosary that i made um, and it's in a little silk pouch thank you helen for teaching me how to make a rosary uh, here's another drawer so that's a pretty much a standard drawer coming out or is it or is it? Here is the secret compartment. Ah, that's a little scroll um, 
which uh, I made. It has all the whole history of Speak Hall written on that. So that fits in there. And if you didn't know it was there, hopefully you'd never know. So some of the other embroidery is stump work. So I did some ivy growing up the outsides of here. So little ivy. And that's a three dimensional embroidery. This is a um, lift off lid, um, sort of fitted lid. So it fits um, inside that. This is a different sort of lift off lid. This is um, called fitted or fit over, if you like, all silk. And then you can see that, that there is room for the inside of that lining to fit into the lid of the, um, the upper part of it. And here we are, all the compartments are all open and this is the box being closed up again. Um, other embroidery includes like little stumpwork dandelions. Because um, I thought it'd be nice to have a little dandelion at the front because everything else is very structural. So there we go. Um, so that's the little movie. Um, I'd like to um, just, how I say, I'm just going to go through just a few photographs of the making of all of this. <laughs> I took an awful lot of photographs as I went. So I'm sorry if this is making your eyes go funny as I go back up to the top here. So, uh, quite a way. So this is the real speak hall as it is. You can see the, um, the Watland door pattern outside. Uh, what you can't see is the courtyard, but, um, but this is it. And so here are my designs worked in, um, InDesign and Illustrator to make sure it all fitted together. And that's me working out how the compartments work and the dimensions of the insides, outsides and walls. Uh, and this is the embroidery coming together. It's on silk uh, using stranded thread. So the um, I decided to use a Jacobean Cruel Works style um, because it suits the, um, the time scale of the house. Um, but it's all in stranded thread, so it's miniature. Um, so lots of chains and little detached chains, etc. Um, okay, so you can see it coming to, and it also has little stumpwork berries because they're yew trees and they have little berries at a certain time of year. Um, and while I was doing that, this is the um, the the wo the printed panels for the exterior. Sorry, that picture looks a bit yellow. I think it's mine. That's, um, I've just spread it out on the bed. It was huge once it came in. And you can see that I worked out what uh, design should be on what panel and just got them printed. Um, and then we've got the brick walls and the, uh, the roof too, which I, are not my uh, images, but I got, um, I bought the um, licenses for those. And here we are putting together one of the uh, one of the walls, so you get pinned onto the card. Lots of pins. It this is the um, back wall of the house. This is it turns over, um, and then we. Uh, this is kind of covering a piece of card. This is conservation board, um, and then we mitre the corners, and then we lace it so so that that fabric is always tight, doesn't come apart, and that's how it looks from the front. Uh, I did some uh, misty fuse uh, to stiffen up some of the silk. As it turned out, I didn't really need it, but um, it works out quite nicely um, to just like hold it together. Um, and this is a one of the um, compartments being constructed and the exterior parts of it. Uh, you see there's wires, these wires sticking out the bottom went through the base to hold it to the base. So I had that. Be organized, write on your pieces of board what everything is, what where up is, because um, this creative box, not only did it take me 550 hours, but it has over 200 panels in it. This is the embroidery being mounted. So I put, uh, used a bit of wadding um, because sometimes um, it won't, uh, quite a dense embroidery like this won't sit flat on the board. So a bit of wadding is good. There it is being pinned in place, ready to be uh, laced on the, um, stitched and laced on the back. That, that's um, this to help, helps you see what size it is. 
they're pretty small, these panels. And here it is in part in construction, excuse me. Um, that's in one of the interiors, these uprights hold the um, lift out compartment. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna zip through all of these. Magnets, this is insertion of magnets. So when the box opens, um, the two pieces will snap together to hold it open. So there are probably, I don't know, maybe 20 magnets <laughs> in total in here. Matching up the embroideries to the walls. Um, so there's a main one on the back uh, wall and then two on the sides. This is my lovely Andrew drilling holes in handles for me. You can see, yeah. Um, we use a curved needle for, um, for doing this. I absolutely love curved needles in the end. Um, must admit, I was not a fan of them to begin with. It, um, the, this is the insertion of magnets, etc., and uh, hand draw pulls. That's what all of this is. Um, but yeah, curved needles are your friend in this. So there we go. That's uh, one of the panels plus one of the um, draw pulls. Got some of these close up of the mitering that happens. Um, this was the hopper, which was a sort of semicircular um, pieces. More of it coming together. This is Andrew making a. Um, <laughs> this is a cake box, but he made he made the dome curved by melting the plastic. It's so I could have somewhere to keep the box while it was under construction, keep the dust off it. So, um, so here we go. He's making it a rounded top from something that was like completely sort of square and rectangular um yeah so melts it and then try again with a kettlebell that's a pan of boiling water um here we go so this is the back of the house coming together many many different parts um and this is the roof so this is the one with the roof um compartment coming together just trying to get everything to match and to fit together so much work, see magnets, work out where they go, write yourself some notes. So um, stitching, everything is stitched together. There are, um, we use a bit of double-sided tape just to in the corners when we're covering the boards, but otherwise everything is stitched together. We end up using an awful lot of thread. <laughs> And um, this is the tiny rosary. Um, so the scissors are there for scale. That was great fun. Thank you, Helen Stevens. She um, very patiently taught me how to do that. Um, and that's the roof compartment. Here we go. Just zipping through now. Um, it's great when we get to the front of the box. There's a little stump work dandelion. Um, and these are the um, stump work. I prefer the term raised embroidery, actually. So this, this is the um, um, <clears throat> that was the ivy is the front and then we stitch the ivy to the finish panel lots and lots to go and here we are the two fr um, front levering out pieces are finally done very exciting and then we stitch it all together this is the bottom of the box so you can see all of the different compartments have been stitched together where possible and then wires that are sticking out and then finally we cover I covered the baseboard um this uh this here this is the baseboard and it was uh stitched to it we are held together with wires sandwiched together and here we go this is the finished item oh yeah that's another compartment at the back with a with a um fabric hinge to it so and there it is that is speak hall um thank you so much for for tuning in to listen to this and I hope you enjoyed taking a look at Speak Hall, the creative box. Um, like I said, 550 hours of a labour of love, I can tell you. Um, I've made several boxes, um, but if you go to the Knitting and Stitch Show, you will get a preview of a kit that I'm going to be doing. Um, fingers crossed, early next year. And it is a bit like Speak Hall, but um, it's, it's called Tudor embroidery toolbox and it's a really useful little object um, 
So do go along to Knitting and Stitch Show at Ali Pali, um, 7th to 10th of October. I'm going to be there on the Friday, um, so I'll, I might bump into you. I'll be lovely to. Um, anyway, have an absolutely wonderful, great weekend and a lovely evening. And yeah, great. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Kate Pankhurst from artofstitch.com. <laughs>